Welcome to the VHF East Lounge, Dr. Thank Zaretsky. you. Great to be here with you. I might say that we have one of our B4T members here, Mr. Ali Tavazzoli. Oh, so <laughs> welcome, welcome. Wow, 99 research articles. Is number 100 in the works? Uh, actually, I'm a little behind on that. So we just had two more articles accepted into the Journal of Prosthodontics. One on the accuracy of full arch implant models with an all on four configuration uh, with uh, different printing um, uh, systems. Uh, and another one was on the accuracy of scanning uh, subgingively and so on too. So well, we're plugging away, we're staying Con busy. Congratulations. Yeah. So um, when I first heard about you and remember this was about eight years ago, uh, you were referred to me as the godfather of material science. That's quite a reputation. And I know that you practice for several years in your private practice. What did get you into material research? Yeah, I, I probably don't deserve that name, but let me just say- In the say, most positive way, yeah, of course. Yeah, let me just say, like James Brown, uh, let me just say, uh, uh, maybe the best way to put it is I'm a very serious student of dental materials. Um, when I uh, completed my fixed prosthodontics program and started at UCLA in 1984, um, I very quickly realized that uh, materials were kind of the key to everything. Um, and so in my career with all of the research that we've done, we've uh, most of the time tried to answer clinical questions. Uh, and so uh, as you're well aware, we have new ceramic systems, new cements, new everything materials uh, that are introduced so rapidly. So we're trying to keep up with that and evaluate those systems and see if it is really worth it for the practitioner to use that new system. And unfortunately, we've had a lot of systems that were not so good. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, but then uh, even I think more exciting right now is the, the revolution going on in, I'm gonna call it digital prosthodontics, uh, where um, we just have this incredible accelerated rate of development and introduction of systems uh, that just make it super exciting to be uh, in this area. Um, and <clears throat> I think uh, one of the things that I try to emphasize is the synergy between the materials and that of the technology. If we don't have good materials, uh, then no matter how good your technology system, it's not going to work. And so we've seen the introduction of a number of, for example, ceramic systems with work with your milling machines uh, that were specifically developed for milling technology. So probably the best example is the uh, Emax lithium disilicate material, which was Emax CAD, which was developed um, to have a higher fracture toughness so that you have less chance of damaging that and causing cracks. So that's the whole name of the game is what we call fracture toughness, the resistance uh, to the propagation of cracks through your ceramics. So we want to have materials that are more resistant, and then we want to have uh, milling systems that are very kind to our materials uh, that do not introduce flaws into it. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But uh, with that then, for example, with the, uh, with the Emax CAD material, it's a softer material. It has a higher fracture toughness and allows you to mill it very quickly very atraumatically as opposed to something that's completely crystallized like the Empress CAD material. And there's all sorts of potential for uh, the introduction of more cracks and flaws uh, into those materials. Um, and so um, with those then, we have systems that allow us to mill them more rapidly and shorten that timeline we have for the fabrication. You know, so with basically most of our ceramics, we still have to go through a sintering process and all the companies have been working on, as we were discussing, shortening the, the time that it takes for sintering, even zirconia materials, mm -hmm. which is kind of mind boggling how quickly they can center those. And originally some of those materials were not very aesthetic, but there are some significant improvements going on with uh, sintering a zirconia material in 15 minutes, yet still having nice translucency depth of layering and all that too. So very exciting time to be in, in uh, digital prosthodontics right now. 
Fantastic. Any thoughts on hybrid materials, so composites that have a ceramic uh, part in it? Yeah. So um, what when in our tests, which we'll discuss later, one of those is something like Aviclar's material that was called Tetracad, which is essentially a composite material. Those tend to be very millable um, and, uh, and have very few flaws in them and can be fabricated. Um, it's, it's too bad, you know, the, um, the lava ultimate, ultimate composite material was actually a good material. Um, the problem is, is that the bond strength of a cement to a processed composite is very poor. And so I think the problem they had at uh, 3M was that doctors were reporting failures of those debonding. It's not the problem. It's not the fault of the material. It's that the preparations were not done parallel enough walls for retention form and so on. I see. But yeah, it works with all of those materials there. Very yeah. good. I had here two days ago, Dr. Michael Shearer, and we talked about additive versus subtractive um, technologies. Uh -huh. uh, what's your take on the latest and greatest in materials for subtractive uh -huh. and additive? Sure. So um, I, I just think uh, Michael is tremendous. He's uh, a very experienced, a highly proficient prosthodontist that does most of these things in-house. He's a wonderful speaker. I've seen him lecture four or five times. Uh, and so um, I'm not sure what his opinions were, but uh, in my opinion, where we are today with the subtractive systems. Today, actually for you know four or five years, we have great systems that um, I can mill out with great predictability, uh, speed, efficiency, low flaw distribution, and high quality restorations. Uh, and, and for example, I might, this might be a little dated, but we have the Z4 system and we've had it for four and a half years. And um, at school, if I'm in a hurry up case, I can do a tie base crown. Uh, I can design it and then I can mill it out in about uh, 28 minutes. I can then center the Emax uh, CAD crown in 23 minutes when I can take it out of the oven without burning my finger. But boom, in less than an hour, I'm able to produce that. And we are seeing, again, more rapid uh, milling pr processes, uh, more rapid uh, uh, processes uh, for centering it and processing those. So, you know, the, the time, time is money and there is, those are all coming down, down, down so that uh, I think we have a tremendous system have had for chair side dentistry. Um, and so, um, you know, and, and then, you know, we do the big stuff with the laboratory, like for full arch zirconia implant restorations. Um, <clears throat> for the, um, the additive materials, Uh, on the one hand, you have a great advantage in that you can more rapidly process those. The disadvantage is that we're getting there, but we're not there today in terms of the materials. So um, uh, Lee Culp and I just finished a gigantic study with nine printable materials, two millable materials for making denture teeth. That's, that's where, where all everything's going on right now in terms of materials development is to develop a better physical property, more wear resistant, printable denture tooth materials. Um, and so we found that a number of those were on a par with the, um, uh, the factory fabricated denture tooth. So that's great. Um, and we're doing another study with Marwan Fratui, one of my graduate students in terms of staining, looking good for that, as good or better uh, as a denture tooth. But the big problem that we have right now is fracture toughness, uh, flexural strength, work of fracture, kind of all those strength issues, we're still not there yet. Mm -hmm. A lot of companies are working on it uh, and they're basically like a composite, they're adding more filler particles there to help increase the strength. Um, so that's kind of the one area that in terms of longevity of a complete denture or a hybrid, implant prosthesis with a milled framework and the teeth milled and, and or sorry, printed on yeah. top of that, uh, we're not quite there yet. So um, maybe I think in the next couple of years we'll get there. But um, in terms of that, I would say the kind of the additive side of that 
um, still has some development to go on uh, and, um, and the subtractive uh, methodology of processing it is probably four or five years ahead of that. Again, today, right now, you know, we can make uh, excellent uh, crowns, bridges very rapidly and very high quality. And that's yeah. now looking at the flexural strength with your research I had on. Now your prosthodontics. How about aesthetics? Um, yeah. And that's the other thing is I think the, um, uh, the ceramic restorations. I, I mean, I'm Mr. All Ceramic. Um, those are still way ahead in terms of the aesthetics, uh, the translucency, uh, the depth and, and the beauty of the ceramic restorations, even monolithic with the materials that we have available. Um, I think those are still uh, a lot farther ahead of the, uh, of the printable materials. Yeah. Dr. Sorensen, tell us a little bit more about your research with the latest milling machines at the B4T lab. Sure. Well, I'm going to go back a little bit. So uh, one of our um, one of our amazing graduate students uh, in the grad process program at University of Washington uh, uh, Pac Wan, um, in 2020 for her master's thesis, we did a study. So what we had was a standardized STL file, and then we used that file and imported it into, uh, the Z4 milling machine, the PM1 machine, which is supposed to be chair side and the PM7, which is the big industrial milling machine. And we, Uh, produce 10 crowns in with each of those systems. And then we would scan that. And then with a metric software, it's called Convince, we would then align those. And in 3D, we measure just the marginal fit of the, of the restorations. And we also... Just talk. Yeah, okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Get out. Okay. So... <laughs> So we, um, <laughs> for, for our international <laughs> visitors, we yeah, also yeah. have that in English. For a slower American <laughs> here, so. so then uh, we also uh, measure the chipping that's in there. So again, we want to look at the damage that's induced into the ceramic. That's going to make it weaker. Defects in the margin, we don't want to have those. Um, and so uh, we found that uh, all three of the systems were excellent. I mean, we're talking... 3D deviations from the master crown design uh, with uh, the Z4, it was like 23 to 28 microns. Amazing, right? Mm -hmm. So very good. Uh, and uh, minimal chipping and so on there too. So we were, we were quite impressed with those. Um, and that's with the Z4 system and it's a wonderful system. I use it in my practice, uh, but I'm sorry. But it's not cheap, right? It's there's a definitely an expense involved, capital investment that's involved uh, in that. Um, so um, you introduce the the E4 um, this fall, and we tested that again on three materials: so Emax semi crystallized, um, Empress CAD fully crystallized, and then the Tetra CAD, which is a composite material. And um, I have to say that. The marginal accuracy was still outstanding. Okay, it wasn't 26, it was 30 microns. So who, who cares? Not statistically different. And I'll even say very, very little chipping with that too. So I'm very excited about that because for, I'm going to say a machine that is, is pretty darn close to the quality of the milling with less damage, with in the United States, a retail price of about $20,000. To me, that really helps our profession because it puts us in the reach of an average, you'd have to be a busy crown or bridge practice for it to make sense or multiple doctors. But now with the cost of that coming down, it really starts to make a lot of sense for doing that. And of course, it's not just the cost of the equipment. You need to have your office working. You need to have somebody that's dedicated um, because the doctor's time is too expensive is you need to have somebody that's, uh, performing those procedures of designing it, which has gotten a whole lot better and, um, uh, and then, uh, fabricating the prostheses and, and going through those uh, processes. And in general, I think it's been really great. Uh, competition is good. So 
We were talking a little bit before we started here. So uh, three shape for the T3 with Trios 3, which I have retailed for about 42,000. Um, great system, fantastic. I think the best scanning system in the world, uh, but um, very costly. So then um, again, competition is great. So you have Medit come out with the i500 for $16,000. And what do you know? Uh, I was on the advisory board for 3Shape in August. They show us the Trios 5, 25% smaller, automatic calibration, instantly heating it for $25,000. So now for under $50,000, I can have that scanner and I can have your milling system in my office. So um, I just, I think the possibilities are really exciting going forward for dentistry here. And you said the Z4 is not cheap. I would say it's pretty inexpensive okay. compared to other systems in the market. In Schulingum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all good. All good. Yeah. Very good. So, um, yeah, what you mentioned already a little bit about the conclusions, but looking at your research and you've done also other research, maybe you can go a little bit uh, into that uh, with the screw hole um, uh -huh. study. Uh, what are the implications for, for dentists? Yeah. in the market. So just that study was uh, interesting. So what we were looking at is, let's say you're buying a Emax block or any of these companies. So you pay two and a half times for that block when it has the pre-drilled hole in it. It turns out when the manufacturers are making that, they're drilling a hole in there too. So um, the study we did with Jack Kiesler, one of our grad students three years ago, pre-COVID. And so um, what we were looking at is comparing the strength of those. So when you think about milling, uh, especially when you're going end on and drilling that hole in there, you have higher stress concentrations, a greater potential to have fracture or cracks in your ceramic. So we compared the, the factory fabricated ones with using the Z4 to milling that, and we found no difference in the strength of that. So therefore I can be more self-reliant. I can save myself uh, one and a half times extra money that I have to pay for those blocks. Again, all those are pointing to the quality and uh, very little damage that uh, is induced into the ceramics when you're manufacturing. So um, a, a dental office or lab using it can, can uh, be very self-reliant and uh, have a high confidence that uh, they are producing a quality product that's going to have good longevity not be weakened by the, the milling process there. So I, uh, I just think there's, you know, very exciting time. I, I finished my prosthodontics program in 1984. I'm gonna say I'm just as excited now as I was when I finished my program for what we can do in, in prosthodontics here. Yeah. So yeah. you taught a lot of students, you had a lot of uh, residents what do you think? How does the student of today change compared to yeah. when you were a student? Great question. So I'm going to say big time changes. So let's talk about it at both levels. So our graduate prosthodontic students. Um, so we're doing a lot of full mouth reconstruction, you know, combination teeth and implant supported and then full arch implant restorations. So um, a number of the studies that we've done, but also then working with this um, the degree of precision and predictability that we have with these systems, uh, you know, designing the case, uh, milling out a surgical guide with the sleeves in it and going through all those processes um, is just amazing what we can do with that now. Now on the really complicated cases where we're altering vertical mention of occlusion and, and completely changing the bite, I'll admit we start out with, we still do it old school with models mounted on an articulator, decide where we're going to go with it. Then we'll scan those. And now we're working entirely on the digital platform. So this process of uh, the conversion process where we're doing all on four teeth in a day. Now we just mill it out in a, uh, in a disc of a tooth colored material. So that's much stronger because we've shown that the, uh, the milled out uh, bridge, conversion bridge, uh, is actually about 35% stronger than taking the heat cross dentures and drilling holes in that. Um, so at every step, we have great uh, systems. 
Uh, and so um, I just, I don't think we can do state-of-the-art prosthodontics anymore without having mm -hmm. this digital workflow. And, uh, you know, even, even okay, you know, with a, with a smaller system, if I have to make uh, 26 crowns, I can still do that just fine on this, right? You know, if I've got that system, okay, it's gonna take longer, yeah. but again, you've got total control over that if you want to. Um, in the dentals, in dentistry, uh, it was kind of interesting. I was talking with the dean of our dental school, um, Dr. Ritter, and that is probably the most frequently asked question is what are you teaching at your dental school? So it's very competitive. There are, uh, I think, 12 new dental schools opening in, in the United States. And that is the question that goes on. There is a there is a site where all potential applicants are on there and they're asking, what are you guys doing? So uh, what we've done is because uh, we believe in this uh, system in our first year in the simulation lab and preclin, yeah, starting with dental anatomy, uh, our faculty are having the students scan their wax ups mm -hmm. and then they can use that with a comparison software for that. Um, then in uh, second year preclin uh, fixed prosthodontics, um, we're teaching our students how to do uh, after the tooth preparation, scanning it, uh, and then milling those out. Uh, and then uh, I, about well, 2013, I started doing um, in spring quarter of the second year, so about a month before they're gonna be in clinic, we do a hands-on uh, ceramic onlay course. So they'll go through the tooth preparations. Uh, they're required to do scans and get those signed off. Uh, and then they'll have a milled ceramic crown uh, sorry, onlay, cut that off, go through the adjustment procedures and all the steps that go on with that. And then of course, more, very importantly is adhesive cementation. Mm -hmm. So they've got that background. And I find even if the students, they, they learn to do that. And also with scan bodies, which is really simple there for a single tooth implant. Um, even if the student hasn't done any scanning till the uh, winter quarter of their, of their fourth year, uh, they just get it really quickly, you know, so um, uh, so we feel like we're providing uh, a sufficient background in that. And then typically it's in the fourth year with the dental students that um, that we're doing actual cases with them. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd, lo we'd love to do more. But, you know, we have five intraoral scanners. And now what the important part is we need to hire a technician who can be a teacher and help make the restorations and do all that. But um, yeah, that's definitely where the future is going here. And, and uh, you look at um, uh, Aspen, which is, I don't know, 900 clinics, and they bought the 900 DSO. intraoral scanners. Yeah, yeah. DSO. And they're, they're putting those in there. And, and they're, do, they're doing a very strenuous uh, financial analysis, and they've determined that they should go in that direction. So it's that, absolutely it's, the future. Yeah, we're, good we're to know there. that this students already learned that yeah, in school. Yeah, yeah the Definitely. future is now. We're here. Yeah. We're there. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Um, yeah, our time is coming to an end. But one last question. Uh, you've lectured internationally in over 30 countries, we heard. You have a huge research network globally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are the differences in terms of materials? Are there any differences between, let's say, the US, Europe, Asia? Um, I would say probably not that different. I mean, there's, I, I've lost track. I don't know how many zirconia uh, 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 companies there are that pr produce the milling discs. Uh, but, um, you know, the leaders in, uh, let's say, in Japan, in Korea, uh, and in the, <laughs> in the German-speaking countries in Europe, and then in the United States, they're they're pretty much worldwide for that, you know. So. Worldwide material, but any preferences? I've heard once that to, maybe in Japan or something, they use more composite chair side, something like uh, that. Yeah, or when I've been lecturing in China, they call them uh, a hybrid restoration. Yeah. So base metal, cast crown with um, uh, PMMA, with acrylic on it. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, you know, they're going what they can afford with that. And now there's... You know, a lot of Chinese yeah. dentists, a lot of Japanese dentists that are doing, you know, outstanding yeah. quality as good as anywhere else. But, you know, I guess for at least taking care of the people for their dentistry, they're using yeah. those 
uh, lower cost approaches for uh, that. Yeah, I was thinking more of CAD CAM materials. Oh, yeah. but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, pretty much the same pretty across much the board. Pretty much the same, yeah. The, the okay. ceramics, uh, the zirconia, uh, yeah, are still still pretty standard all over the world there. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Sorensen, for giving us the honor here to, yeah. to be with us. Uh, we will have a little happy hour now. Uh, right. I've heard you will stay a little bit. So if you have any questions for Dr. Sorensen, mm -hmm. he will be available. Yeah. Uh, we have a little thank you gift for you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a travel mug, a VHF travel mug that yeah, you right. always think of us. All and right. Then a, A uh, unique and numbered graffiti <laughs> hat <laughs> that you're right. welcome to wear. Very cool. I'm there, baby. <laughs> I'm going to adjust it here a little bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. There.